Thanks for tuning in to BZB TV and welcome to our third installment of AV over IP and how it is revolutionizing modern AV systems. If you missed episodes one or two, you can click on the hovering eye around here or you can look below on our descriptions. We'll provide the links. Our team at BZB Express did an outstanding job procuring all the parts needed to create our AV over IP series. Furthermore, we want to extend our thanks to Atlona, PureLink, Wirestorm, Key Digital, as well as Kramer for helping us set up. To be honest, without their support, none of this would be possible. Here at BZB Express, we truly believe that AV over IP is the wave of the future, and we want to be able to share what we've learned in our experiences with you all. So stay tuned. So I can learn how to Thanks for tuning in to part three of our AV over IP series. Today we've got a special guest, our very own Chris Graham. Chris, first of all, we want to thank you. You did a lot of work setting up our AV over IP, <coughs> researching, mm -hmm. experimenting, spending some time on the phone. So that's a lot of valuable time. Again, thank you so much for doing all that. Absolutely. Moving forward, we want to pick your brain regarding installing AV over IP and just some things to consider if you want to set up this type of system for your home. Mm -hmm. So let's address the homeowners first when it comes to AV over IP. What are some important things to consider when setting up an AV over IP system for the home? Well, of course, we all know 1080p uh, is not cutting it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, 4K, HDR are the new standards at this time. Mm -hmm. um, we also know um, there are multiple audio formats out there. Um, so you need to analyze you know, um, what audio formats your customer may need. Okay. Um, if they have a home theater room, receiver, so forth, um, you want to make sure that you know, whatever it's built for, the AV over IP devices um, can actually apply for that sound. Okay. And work. And what else should we consider? I mean, I'm sure you touched on a few things. What are some other important things that we need to think about? Well, of course, I mean, like any project, you got to see the whole scheme of it, you know. So um, what are the client's uh, needs? Um, uh, do they have a current whole house audio system, a control system? Do they have a home theater? Um, are they gamers? Um, you know, as well, the AV over IP devices, um, many brands will actually offer an optional USB extension. Um, so that's something to think about in the future as we become more interactive with our TVs. Uh, you may want to put a keyboard and a mouse by one of your TVs. True. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things to definitely think about prior to setting up AV over IP. Yes. Chris, you touched on whole house audio. What if a client has a digital audio receiver, including whole house audio, basically an analog system mm -hmm. with a zone amplifier? and they want to implement AV over IP? Um, well, in that situation, uh, they're going to require a device coder that's going to give you both uh, options for audio de-embedding. Um, so sometimes you just need one, sometimes you just need analog audio, mm -hmm. sometimes you need both. So okay. you're going to want to decide which model is going to fit that requirement. All right, and how would we control this type of system? Um, just like any AV system out there, um, the big name brands will work. Uh, it's a good idea, though, to research the brands and the manufacturers to see what they have to offer. If you like a particular AV over IP unit mm -hmm. and it fits all your needs, you know, hey, check in, see what they got. Um, for instance, Wirestorm offer, offers a Nauto, uh, Key Digital offices, offers uh, Compass Control. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of different options out there. All right, so bottom line, you're telling me that we need to just qualify our customer, including their application. Absolutely. Um, determine how much control they actually need to. Mm -hmm. So this will give you an idea. Um, are we talking about lights, drapes, thermostats? Um, or are we just talking about audio video control so they can change the channels on the cable box, DVD player, and so mm -hmm. forth? All right. So let's say I already have a matrix switch system at home. Mm -hmm. Does AV over IP still make sense for me? Essentially, yes. You can even use the same control system if you're used to one control system. Um, it will work with the AV over IP devices. Um, basically, implementing AV over IP um, it preserves everything about a traditional AV system. And what if I'm not looking to set up any of those fancy control systems? I want something simple. Well, I mean, if you're going to centralize your equipment in a rack or a closet or whatever, mm -hmm. you're going to need some type of control. 
Um, probably the least cumbersome and inexpensive solution um, would be a universal remote control system okay. um, with like an RF and an IR base station in order to tell everything in the rack what to do. Um, you could do something like that typically for under $1,000. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. And for the clients out there, some people that are watching us maybe right now, they're thinking about AV over IP. However, they don't have any basic networking knowledge. They're not mm -hmm. certified to install mm -hmm. this type of system, but they want to do it themselves because they're watching BZB TV mm -hmm. and they're getting all this feedback like, hey, you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, unless you have a lot of patience and a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of time to get on the tech support, um, definitely recommend contacting a professional integrator, um, installer. Um, of course, you're always, um, you know, you can give us a call here at BZB TV, um, BZB Express, and we will, you know, do what we can to help you out. All right, so you talk a lot about residential. Why don't we shift our focus in the commercial end of AV over IP? What are some things that we should consider when setting up AV over IP in a corporate type environment? Well, obviously our commercial world is entirely different than our residential world when it comes to requirements for signal distributions. Mm -hmm. um, besides the primary aspect of maintenance, uh, means meaning it's easier to replace a single bad unit than it is to replace an entire system, um, there are a multitude of aspects to consider beneficial when it comes to how businesses and organizations are planning on implementing these AV over IP technologies. Okay. Um, like residential, uh, we need to qualify uh, the business's requirements, demands, and, and the overall environment. Um, does the project call for 1080p, 4K um, resolutions? Mm -hmm. um, what about the input outputs? What other devices are we connecting to? Uh, is there some USB KVM extensions that are necessary? Mm -hmm. um, you know, some uh, large scale operations are going to want to use fiber optics, so you would need to find a brand model that does have fiber optic capability or connectivity. Um, you know, in general, and not to mention like building a building. A lot of businesses want to um, be able to see one thing in one building and transfer it to the other building. So. That's something to take into consideration as well. All right. Well, let's talk about scalability in a commercial type space. Now, matrix switchers, there are AB matrix switchers that are 16 by 16, even 32 by 32. Mm -hmm. These are large components, very expensive. Mm -hmm. And in an AV over IP type environment, what are some limitations in, in corporate or in a commercial type environment when it comes to future expansion? Um, as far as scalability comes, um, you know, there's really no limitation in how many of these encoders, decoders you can connect. I mean, it's as simple as connecting one switch to another switch, mm -hmm. connecting your encoders or decoders, making sure everything's in the program or the software. And, you know, at that point, you're pretty much ready to go. It's, it's awesome for expansion. All right. Well, that sounds like a cost effective solution for future expansion. Absolutely. I mean, however, due to the lack of AV over IP case studies out there in real environments, it may behoove any company out there that's looking into this technology to um, try a demo first. Uh, you can contact BZB Express. We do offer a demo program. You fill out a form and qualify. And if you qualify, we send you equipment and you can go ahead and test it if you like it. We'll order you some equipment. If not, you ship it back. Well, Chris, you know, we're talking about commercial environments. And when we talk about commercial, we definitely need to talk about security. Mm -hmm. So how secure is AV over IP? Overall, uh, very secure. Um, as you can see by the chart, uh, there's some uh, things you can do to make it even more secure, such as deactivating USB ports and so on. Mm -hmm. um, there are some brands. Uh, I believe Atlona has the AES-128 encryption as well as the AES-67 for audio. Um, so in a high, sec high security um, type environment, Defense Department, military, they're probably going to want something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the network infrastructure is a critical portion when considering AV over IP as an option. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about the network and what is the minimum bandwidth that you would need? Um, well, you're going to need at least one gigabit. You can go up to 10 gigabit uh, networks mm -hmm. for certain devices. They offer that ability with fiber optics. Mm -hmm. um, but typically, you know, these devices on the one gigabit network are going to use up to about 900 megabytes per second for the 4K HDR streaming. Um, lower resolutions can go uh, lower megabytes, but you know, you're going to want the one gigabit network environment or it just won't work. Also, uh, the 10 gigabit network is going to be for more uncompressed streaming. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. While we're talking about commercial, on the subject of control, how are these systems being controlled or even, or is a control system even necessary? 
Well, I mean, typically a control system is required. You know, Crestron's in the commercial world, obviously. Um, these manufacturers of these devices do offer different software programs, some more granular, some more um, involved for, you know, complete control. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it, it depends. If you have a digital signage um, or video wall presentation or like a live event or something, you really don't need that much control. You might be okay with a AV over ITP device that, you know, you just need to go in the console settings and set the thing up and get it running and monitor it. We know all these manufacturers are reputable. They offer excellent products and offer outstanding technical support. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to their AV over IP products, what are some features that they share and what are some differentiating features? What are some unique features about them? Well, good question. Um, let's just talk about some of the basic similarities first. That would be where I would want to start. Sure. I do recall from our last video that one thing you want to definitely look at is their certified network switch list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very critical. Um, probably the most important part about setting up an AV over IP system is making sure your network switch is configured properly mm -hmm. and is actually going to work with the system. Just because it has all the same features as the switch that's on the certified list doesn't actually mean it's going to work because they haven't had a chance to test it, um, which I actually came across myself with one experiment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I remember. <laughs> so, I mean, besides that, all of these brands are capable of creating a video wall, which you saw. Yeah. Um, some brands can do 8x8, some 16x16, and uh, some limitless, you know. Um, so that's a common feature. RS-232, IR, point-to-point uh, -point connectivity is a feature. I think PureLink does 400 feet, might separate it there. Okay. Um, each offers some type of software control. Um, whether it's full control or just a basic control uh, or a video wall control, um, these are little uh, software aspects that will um, vary from, from brand to brand. Okay, Chris, you covered a few similarities of each brand. How about some unique features? Uh, well, we can start off with that Lona. Um, that Lona offers HDR10, 4K at 60 Hz, 444. Um, they also offer uh, dual HDMI uh, outputs and inputs on a couple other coders you can check out, um, as well as the audio formats, stereo, Dolby, DTS, and Atmos. Uh, one of the big separators for Adlona is they offer two different versions, residential, as well as uh, the pro-type versions. Mm -hmm. um, so pro-type is going to be used in the commercial world. One of the advantages to that is that it offers SMPTE 2022 forward air correction, as well for high security environments, AES-128 and AES-67. Um, the software you're going to use on Alona is going to be um, AMS Control. Okay. And how about the PureLink PureStream VIP system? Um, PureLink, uh, you're running a resolution at 4K uh, at 60 Hertz, uh, 420 with the units we used. Um, they offer stereo, Dolby HD, uh, DTS HD for audio formats. Um, what's really cool too is they offer a channel selector and a little IR remote, um, which is pretty convenient for a basic setup there. Um, as well, they have USB KVM extensions if you want to extend something to a display where you can be interactive. Um, basically, they're, they're in a plug and play type um, system. You can configure the coders in the console, which is a big advantage if you don't feel like um, taking out the software. Um, but they do offer uh, VPX software for control as well as Wallmaster. Um, and another uh, nice advantage versus the other ones, they have a fiber optic port. So if you need to do networking with fiber optics, Turtling Sketch covered. Chris, how about the Wirestorm Network HD system? Uh, Wirestorm is a great system, very easy to use software program. Um, Wirestorm offers the HDR10, mm -hmm. the 4K at 30 Hz, 444 with the equipment we tested. Um, also multiple audio formats, the stereo, DTS, um, Atmos, so you're pretty well covered when it comes to a surround sound system. Um, they have a nice uh, NHD, uh, it's called Network HD Touch. Uh, which you can use with iPads. Uh, very simple to drag and drop sources to uh, displays. I really liked it. As well as uh, they offer an auto control program. Um, two different controllers. You can get one that's IP based control only, or you can get the full Inato system, um, which is going to be full control RS-232, IR, and so forth. Great. Yeah, I do remember the Network HD system. The uh, touch panel is really nice. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move forward. Let's talk about the Key Digital Enterprise AV. Mm -hmm. So, um, Key Digital, working at 4K at 60 Hz at a 420 chroma sampling. We also have uh, multi-audio formats as well, just like the others, uh, multi-channel, Atmos, uh, DTS. Um, they offer KVM USB extensions for the Key Digital, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is nice if you're looking to extend any peripherals over to the uh, display area. Um, as well as a local HDMI input um, on the RX units. So if you have something locally that you want to plug into that um, decoder that's behind the TV, you can do that and have mm -hmm. the device right there at the station. Pretty unique feature. 
Uh, Software-wise, they um, give you the iOS app for Apple devices, uh, for iPads, uh, iPhones, etc. Um, as well as Compass Control Complete Software Program. You can use to control the home or the business. All right, Chris, so the last system that you set up for us was the Kramer AV over IP system. What are some things you can tell us about that system? Um, well, Kramer, uh, we're coming in at 4K 60 hertz, 420, um, audio formats, accepting the wide range again, uh, DTS, Atmos, uh, multi-channel, stereo. Um, they do offer KVM USB extensions mm -hmm. as well. Um, the coders on the Kramer units are configurable in the consoles. Um, so you can actually connect them and just get right into the consoles if you want or utilize the software programs they offer. Um, some of the software programs offered are K-Touch, K-Config, uh, Kramer Network 2.1, as well as Kramer Control for complete control. Um, one of the unique features on there on Kramer that I liked as well is a channel selector um, for the sources. So right on there you can select the source if you're at the uh, decoder or display. Now overall I can say um, all of these systems are great systems and you really need to do your homework as mentioned before in order to decide which one's going to fit your application. Um, but in general they all seem stable, um, all of our pictures look great, sound was good, um, it's just all a little bit different as far as like what you're looking for for your specific application. Do you need fiber optic? Do you need USB KVM? Uh, what's your resolution requirements? So forth. All right, Chris, so we've talked about implementing AV over IP for residential as well as commercial environments. You also talked about similar functions that they all share as well as unique features that separate them from one another. another. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a client and I'm looking to implement AV over IP, what are some things that BZB Express can offer? Well, um, here at BZB Express, obviously our clients are the most important aspect to our business. Um, we offer system design consultations as well as uh, free tech support. If we're not able to assist you with the tech support question you have, we'll get you to somebody that can answer it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are an authorized distributor for all these manufacturers. Uh, we work hand in hand with them on a day-to-day -day basis, getting the latest news and updates regarding products as well as firmware. Um, so we know what's going on when it comes to our uh, manufacturers and our brand's models. Um, we also offer a price match guarantee. Um, one of the more unique aspects to BZB Express is we have a trade-in program, as you know. Yes. So, um, you know, if you want to contact us regarding maybe trading in some old equipment that you have, you know, we can make you an offer. Uh, just fill out a form and we can go from there. Well, that concludes our AV over IP series. Now, if you missed part one or part two, check our descriptions below. We'll have the links to those episodes. Also, if you found this video informational, please share it with your friends, colleagues, and anyone that's looking for this type of technology and wants to implement it for either their home or business. And lastly, Chris, I want to thank you for shedding some light on the AV over IP technology and spending a lot of time with us. Absolutely, no problem, man. Yeah, awesome. And let me remind you guys to make sure to subscribe to BZB TV if you haven't done so. Hit that subscribe button and also press that like button for us and show us your support. That's all we have for today. We'll catch you guys on the next episode.